When the pH is 7, then it's a case where the sample is neither acids nor base. But less than 7, it's an acid, we say. More than 7, it's a base all the way. Welcome to another past HSC exam question videos. In this video, we're going to cover this past HSC exam question, which comes from the ethylene and addition polymer chapter. What I'll do in a second, I'll read the actual question. Once I've read the question, get about five seconds to pause the video. Once you've paused the video, attempt the question. And when you're ready, press play and I'll go over the actual answer itself. So the question here is, flow chart shows the production of polyethylene. Identify compound X with one mark and describe process Y with three marks. Compound X here through dehydration goes to ethylene. Ethylene per process Y goes into polyethylene. So this is the flow chart. And then the next part is a sample of polyethylene was produced by process Y. The following graph shows the distribution of molecular weights of polymer molecules in the sample. C, why is the range of molecules weights observed? That's with one mark. So here's your number of polymer molecules and molecular weight. When you're ready, press play and, and cover, try to attempt the question. And when you're ready, press play again. Actually, press pause and attempt the question, and when you're ready, press play, and, and I'll cover the actual answer. Welcome back. Okay, so for this one, what you have to do for the first one, is all you have to do is identify, so you have to name it. And in this case, we've got compound X, which for dehydration forms ethyl ethylene. So if you remember ethanol, when ethanol is dehydrated, it forms ethylene. So compound X, in this case, is ethanol. And to get that marked, all you have to do is write ethanol, and you get your one mark. So one mark out of one for doing that. Now the next part was describe the process. So describe the process Y, which was this here. So ethylene going from poly to polyethylene. So it was obviously the polymerization process. So for this, you should for the polymerization, you should name a couple of things. You obviously should mention the words monomer and then also the words polymer. Mention how monomers form to polymers. So in this case, for the addition reactions. So mention the word addition reaction or addition polymer in some somewhere in your answer. And then go briefly describe both high density and low density polyethylene and how these get produced, again, just briefly. And that's where it gets you three marks. So first I wrote polyethylene is produced when the double bond of ethylene monomers are broken. And the monomers attach together through an addition reaction for polyethylene. Right, so here first we've mentioned that the double bonds between ethylene, they break, that's important. Then we mentioned that once they're broken, they can attach through these addition reactions to form polyethylene. So this will get you most definitely a mark. And then what you can do next is you can briefly describe poly, uh, how low density and, and high density polyethylene gets produced. So first I wrote, um, this can be done with the help. So the actual polymerization can be done with the help of metallocene catalysts. Remember, metallocene catalyst has to do with high density polyethylene. So right now we're, we're describing how high density polyethylene gets, gets produced. So then we need a metallocene catalyst and moderate temperatures to produce this high density polyethylene. So that gets your mark. And then we also quickly mentioned how low density polyethylene gets produced. So low density polyethylene can be, can be produced with the help of an initiator molecule, which was that peroxide radical and high pressure and temperatures of about 300 degrees Celsius. So here, what we've done here is just briefly described. If it's worth more than three marks, you might think of writing more because when you're worth three marks, just have a brief description of the polymerization process and you get one for the general way, so the double bond breaking ethylene monomers and them attaching, that's worth a mark. And then you get marks for quickly describing the specific examples of high density and low density polyethylene. So that would be worth three out of three. And what you can do as well, you can always add some equations. So the equation you could add here is just to show um, how ethylene monomers attach to form polyethylene. So you could do the whole CH2 
double bond CH2. So this is your monomers. And then if you have two of these joined together, what would happen is, is you would have that double bond breaking. And the way you write that is CH2, CH2, and then big brackets around it. So here we only have one bond, not a double bond anymore. And then you have these polymers. So then the N means we might have two or three or five or ten of these monomers attached together. But this is showing that we have, if these monomers attached, we have a double bond breaking and it becomes polyethylene. And you can include that into your answer as well. So for the next part, a sample of polyethylene was produced by process Y. The following graph shows the distribution of molecular weights of, poly of polymer molecules in the sample. And that was worth, so the question is why is the range of molecule, molecular weights observed? So why is not just, why, not, why aren't they all the same weight? Why is there difference in weights when it comes to these chains? And that's with one mark, so a really quick answer. And remember that was to do with the fact that when it comes to polymerization, polymerization is not an exact procedure. You might have one which is 100,000 monomers long, another one which is 120,000 monomers long. So they're not all exactly the same, they're all within this relatively narrow scope. But you find them, this is the average weight. So here's the average weight, and then you have on either side, a bit smaller and a bit bigger, you always have a few as well. So this is talking about the average weight when it comes to, when you say, you know, the, the average weight is 1 million grams. And that's the average, so it's going to be some uh, which are lighter and some which are heavier. So for this, the answer I gave was the polymerization process of polyethylene is somewhat random. It's random, somewhat random, which means that not all polymers are of the same length and weight. And that should get you a mark as well. So for this, we've gotten, this was a five mark question. If you've given this, not the same answer, but roughly you have the same points in it. We've gotten five out of five overall. And where do these come from? They come from this dot point outline, which means we need to have the basic crunch of these kind of, of how these get produced. Outline the steps in the production of polyethylene, as an example of a commercially and a commercially and industrial important polymer. So in this case, that's what we talked about. We talked about polyethylene and how polyethylene gets produced. And this is what was the questions we were asking us as well. So I hope that was useful. Thank you for watching.